Okay, I'm back. I did a quick uh, quick search on something. Let's set the uh, this this one aside for a time being. I wanted to make sure. I want to see if I was right about this being on Fahrenheit. So apparently, you hold down the up and down. There it is. It was in Fahrenheit. Okay, so I want to change this to Celsius and make sure that's saved. I'm in Celsius now. That's all I wanted. Again, now back to this guy here. We have a little problem. This is the micro tip. This is the normal tip. The switch is actually operating the way it should. Forward activates the switch. This one's already in the down placement in forward. So it seems to have too much too much weight possibly. Is that what's going on? Either that or there's supposed to be a spring maybe that's supposed to push on this. There is. I can see a spring right there. It's supposed to push this metal plate forward. This one is missing the spring. All right, so now we have the issue. What can we do to fix it? I just happened to take this motor out of something last night. This is why I keep spare parts laying around. I bet you we can use this spring in some way to make this work. Let's see what we got. First, we have to remove the switch. Seems simple enough. The spring may be in here or the spring may have fallen out. Simple momentary switch. It does have a resistor that runs across the back of the momentary switch. And you can see right here, there was a spot, an empty channel that should have a spring. This spring should be pushing against this part, which the paint has been deliberately removed and that's where the spring should be pushing against. Now we don't have that spring and I can tell you that spring was there just by looking down in here. I can actually see the spring looking straight down and that was the dead giveaway of the missing part here. Uh, again, eBay buy as is. I'm really surprised that this came practically brand new. I mean everything was sealed from the factory. It looked like a new unit. But this happens and for the price I cannot complain. I cannot really say much about it. Now I could look at the other one to see how big the spring is or I could just try to rig something up that might have enough tension on it that might work for the time being. Let's go ahead and cut the contacts off of this. Actually it would be better if I actually unsolder this. Well let's use a new soldering iron now. I need to unsolder this piece here. So we're gonna hook up the 2037 again. We're good. We're in sleep mode. Let's see what temperature it climbs to now. See now it's set at 350, 350 Celsius, which is where I would rather it be. Now it should climb to 350. And then after it hits 350, because it is not sleeping, can't go to sleep without the actual cable hooked up. Sleep SLP. Okay. So now it basically drops down to about 200 degrees Celsius, which brings it under the temperature of where the tips would oxidize due to the, the corrosive properties of solder. And it will actually extend the life of the tips, which is a really nice feature. As soon as I pick this up, it should bring it right back to 350. There it is, beep, done. Really nice. I like that. And back to sleep. Perfect. I'm probably doing a lot of work for no reason here at this point. There is probably a much better spring that will fit up in my lab somewhere. Aha, wait a minute. We got something here. This particular car has seen the last of its racing days. I guarantee you that. It's had a few championships. It's done. There's a reason it's sitting over here in pieces because I've been stripping it down slowly but surely one piece at a time for spare parts. There's a little servo spring servo tensioner on here that was used as a pullback on the throttle for the gas motor so it put it back into idle position when the servo didn't have any anything applied to it and there we go. Got this nice little spring here. I may have to cut it down to size. I don't know. We'll find out. Oh it's too short. Oh no. Unless I put it up in one of the other channels, if I squeeze it up into this channel, it will work, but I don't believe that's the channel it's meant to be in. 
actually, you know, it's 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 missing the uh, it's missing the bare paint side of things. Not the channel it's meant to be in. So instead of taking one spring, we're cutting up one spring and trying to make it smaller. We're gonna take another spring and stretch it out. Oh, look, I didn't realize I had one on here. Oh, look at this. The motor has two springs on there. And this one is a... Would you look at that? That seems to fit the channel. It's a little loose. I'm going to have to figure out a way to get to stay in one place. How big is the spring on this thing? Spring, I guess we should compare. Since we do have two stations here. Okay, so it stays in place by holding up against the wall of the unit. I think we can get this one to work. Stretch it out just a little bit more. We're almost there. What length are we talking here? Ah, uh, that might be it. So we've taken that coil that was on that motor originally and we've stretched it out to match the current stock spring. And the other thing that I need, I need to unsolder this one now. I unsoldered the wrong spring. I should have gone for the other spring. 350 is usually a good temp. I'm going to grab this. Unbelievable. That is amazingly fast. We need to cut off this little nip away from your eyes. That is about the same exact length, but this spring is much stronger. I may want to shorten this down. Bring that tip in so it doesn't scratch. Yeah, we are definitely gonna bring this down a lot more. I think that may work. Let's give that a shot. So that's our new spring. Just barely a little bit of a uh, tension on there. Should be enough to keep it up. This is the one that came with the spring already installed, the stock spring. And you can see it's a very light spring. So let's go ahead and put this on. As I mentioned, any other day I, I, I would be calling Heiko and saying, hey, you guys sent me something missing a part or a defective holder or whatever you want to call it. Now just feeling that, that may actually still be too much. Just a little too much. This is where I'm thinking the stronger spring may actually be better on this one. Just, just because that has a heavy, heavier iron. So let's go ahead and switch that around and try that. Because there is not much to these micro tips at all. So let me go ahead and put this on this one instead. They're interchangeable. Still too strong. Okay, we gotta cut that spring back. That spring's still too much. I'd rather cut back than cut too much. If we do cut a little too much though, we can always stretch it out a little further. In this case, we may be stretching out just a little bit further. Not much, but it does look like I've taken just a tad bit off too much. Now it's starting to feel like a weaker spring, like the stock one. It may actually have the perfect amount of tension on it. Let's find out. It even feels like the stock one now. Even if I lift the cord up, it's just the weight of the iron. Has that little bit of a bounce. That's really nice. I think we're good. Even this one at this point. For the micro, let's just go sit on top. Yep. And the micro is triggering it. I'm happy with that. I'm still going to leave the strong, stronger spring on this side because it is a stronger spring. And those, the T2027s uh, 20, are heavier irons than the micro. Both of these, the micro upgrade and the regular station, were identical sleep switches and springs. Only thing dif different being is these yellow mounts here for the diameter that holds 
pulls the iron so it doesn't fall out. Just by feel, I, I, I would have to say they're perfect. I mean, I would have to use precision weights to see which one weighs out and, and triggers at what weight, but just this alone, I would say they're perfect. And if they're not, there are screws here. By raising this up a little bit, by bringing this piece down a little bit, you can actually cause more of a, a counterweight to it. So there is ways to adjust these. And there's the beep, and there's the sleep. So we've reached temperature, and it goes to sleep. If I decide I want to change to the micro, I can do so as well now. We pull this tip out and we'll move this over here. Now we can just kind of wrap this up here on the station. Now we hit our temperature and our sleep because I heard a little beep. Oh, you know what? That's right. Sleep jack was plugged into the wrong one. There we go. Works really nicely. Very happy with the Paco FX951. Very, very happy. Definitely will recommend it. Thanks for watching. Keep on tinkering and be safe.